Uh, from the start, we envisioned a program with the guiding principles that makeup is a form of expression, just like music, just like art. It doesn't have a gender, nor does it conform to gender binary, that everyone has the right to express themselves through the use of makeup without judgment. Uh, so a little bit before we begin, um, this means that we truly want this to be a safe space for everyone, regardless of your gender identity. We should all show respect to one another and be mindful of pronouns and gendered language, please. If you feel comfortable, please add your pronouns after your name in Zoom so that our MUA and staff can use the pronouns that you prefer when referring to you. If you need help adding your pronouns, please just reach out, let us know. One other little bit, uh, we will be recording this today. So please um, disable your audio, use the active speaker mode in Zoom during the session to make questions. Um, either on the comment section. Um, questions or comments may be public for everyone. They're sent private to the host. During Q&A time, you may unmute to comment or ask a question. Now we're getting to the recorded part. <laughs> so again, um, this program will be recorded. If you do not wish to appear in the recording, either on voice or video, please make sure that your audio and video are disabled. Interactions via chat will not appear on the recording. And again, this recording will be made available via the LibGuide. Um, so if you want to go back and just touch base on everything we learned today, you can definitely do that. All right. So before we bring on our program today, just know that we that this program is made possible by a partnership with the San Antonio Pride Center. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Morgan Yoshimura, um, and I'm uh, with the library. Um, and so since Lex from the Pride Center is having tech issues, I will just go ahead and um, speak about uh, the wonderful things that the Pride Center offers. So um, again, my name is Morgan, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, Monica, could you go to the next slide for me, please? All right, so the Pride Center is an, a very, very valuable community resource. They offer so many um, services to folks that identify um, as LGBTQ plus um, or are questioning their um, gender or um, sexual orientation. Um, there's, you know, um, most things are being, or everything is being done virtually right now. Um, there are things like case management, there's peer-to-peer -peer groups, group therapy, there are some online options. Um, through Discord. So if you don't love Zoom meetings like this, but you just want to connect on Discord, um, that's an option as well. Um, you can get more information about the Pride Center um, through the links that are here on the slide, their Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, or the link tree. Um, and I'm also going to post a link in the chat if you want to um, get on the Pride Center's um, email list so you can keep in the loop with um, the things that they have going on. Um, I will put a link in the chat for you to enter your contact information. So um, we're very excited um, to be partnering with the Pride Center um, for this Express Yourself series. Um, and also um, want to thank the San Antonio Public Library Foundation, which provided some funding for this program. So um, we're just super excited um, to be offering um, this series um, so that everyone can have a space to explore their gender expression um, through the use of makeup. Um, and at this point, then, I will turn it over to our presenters for tonight. So, um, Chibi Ordunya and Liz Gates are back with us. If you were here um, last week for Tuesday on All Things Skin, um, they are back again today to talk about um, eyes and lips. So, appreciate that. Um, and our two staff moderators um, are Monica and Kimberly. So if you have, I think it's incorrect on this slide, um, but if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat and we will take care of them. So thank you so much, Chibi and Liz, take it away. Yeah, super excited to be back y'all. Um, some of you were here last time, some of you are new this time. So, you know, just like they said, we're gonna go over a couple of things. Uh, use the chat, we're watching it. So if you got a question, just drop it in the chat. That way we make sure we get your questions answered. Um, also, because this is eyes and lips, this just occurred to me like 20 seconds ago. It isn't like as big as the face. It's much, the eyes and lips are a much smaller part of it. So you may want to, in your Zoom window, switch the view to speaker view so that we can be a little bigger and you might be able to see what we're doing as we're doing it. Um, that's just an option that I'm throwing out there because I just thought of that because it's like, otherwise, 
this is how I'm gonna. This is how we're gonna be doing makeup today. <laughs> uh, in any case, a quick introduction about me. Um, I've been doing makeup for about 15 years. I got my start in theater. That's my background. I worked with Mac Cosmetics for almost a decade uh, as a regional trainer. Um, so giving classes, teaching is a passion of mine that I love, uh, and I can't wait to share uh, because there's so many different types of products. For me today, a lot of it is going to be more based on tools and techniques and how to do things rather than specific products that do specific things versus last time with skin, we did talk about very specific products and, and their benefits. So that's a little bit about me. Liz, go go on, introduce your gorgeous self. Thank you, Chibi. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Gates, and I'm excited to be with y'all. And welcome back for everybody that is um, joining us. Um, again, and all our new people. I got into makeup a little late. Um, so for some of y'all that are just exploring makeup, hey, I'm your girl. Um, I joined Mary Kay five years ago. I didn't know how to put on any kind of makeup. And um, through Mary Kay, I learned how to do makeup, not only on myself, but teach others. So I really am excited to show y'all um, some tools and techniques, like Chibi said, Everything tonight is just going to be more of like what tools to use to get the look that you're looking for. So just a couple of things. Um, Chibi's going to really do a lot of drama tonight. So when he is um, speaking, make sure you're paying attention. He's going to do more like a drag queen type look, like real dramatic. So if you have been like scared and you're like, ooh, I'm interested in that, really watch what Chibi is doing. I'm going to do more of your everyday natural type, whatever makeup. And then I'm going to show you how to transition it from daytime to nighttime. Like you're getting ready to go to dinner or you're going to a special event. So um, y'all just put the um, questions in the chat and just really um, watch us as we're doing this. So we're going to start with our brows. And what we're going to do also, so y'all know, is we are going to do like half of our face. So um, I'm going to let Chibi tell y'all what he's doing with his brows. Go ahead. All right, I'll, I'll get started here. So um, I'm filling in my brows with an eyebrow pencil. I really love these like tiny little itty bitty eyebrow pencils that have like the very specific points because they allow you to just do these like short little strokes to fill in almost to like mimic that you're drawing like little hairs. Brows are so important right now. We're all wearing masks, right? The only thing people can see is our, our eyes. So why not fill in the brow? And because I have super, like my hair is black, people, it's black. Um, I, it really bothers me to have black hair and brown eyebrows. So the pencil that I'm using is like a taupe kind of color. It's almost like a gray. Um, so you can see the difference immediately, right? Where it is, it's fuller, but it still doesn't look too intense. And then I'm gonna go in with a dark, dark color to like delineate it. So let me do the other one. Liz, where are you at with your brows? I'm on mute, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm using this pretty cool tool. It has a spoolie on one side and y'all this, I'm gonna use this later. This is like an eyeliner type pencil. So if you're looking for something, you want to brush your brows because remember it's hair. Just like you brush your hair, you want to brush your brows. And I'm using a fine tip. Let's see if y'all can see that on the camera as well. Like Chibi, that's going to give me the um, little hairs that I need. Yeah. Short little strokes. Yep. To mimic the hairs. That's exactly. You're going to see how the difference is. Now, for some of y'all that don't have brows, and you're wanting brows, um, I recommend outline the brow to the shape that you want. I just have less with the natural shape of my brows, but um, you wanna outline it with a pencil and just very, very fine. And then you can fill your brows in with um, eyeshadow as well. That's another trick. Um, and then you can fill it in with like, little eyebrow pencils okay so go ahead should be yeah so you can see i've gone in with the second color now the darker one to give it like a very sharp kind of edge versus the soft natural one right 
Um, so it's your preference as to how dramatic you want your brow to be. I'll tell you a little trick too that I like to do in terms of uh, creating a brow uh, because these are not the way my brows naturally grow. I will draw on the brow I want and then go in and tweeze around it, right? So that when you go back and you like fill them in, you're creating the shape that you already want um, because you drew it. So it's yours, own it, right? And then the other thing that I'm gonna do now that I'm kind of finished with the brows and just kind of comb them through like Liz was saying, that helps the color blend. Um, I'm gonna prep my lips with a little moisture real quick uh, because I like to use this very, it's almost like an oil. Uh, it's called uh, Lucas Papa ointment, um, but it's very, very thick. And so I like to put it on my lips while I do the rest of my face so it has a chance to soak in, but then it won't infect the integrity of whatever lip products we're using. Since we're doing eyes and lips today, I'm gonna do that. Mm -mm. Okay. And also while he's talking about lips, um, I have a couple of things I wanna recommend. So if you have dry lips, I use, um, this just happens to be Mary Kay, but it didn't have to be Mary Kay, I'm just saying. This is a lip scrub, you use it twice a week. It's a sugar mm -hmm. scrub. So it really, any kind of sugar scrub will really work. It gets all that dead skin off of the lips. And then I follow it up with the Shea Lip Balm. And I had already kind of did my lips a little bit before, but when we get ready to do our lip for real, I'm gonna show y'all another product. Um, so I'll let y'all hold off on that. But just like he said, he put some moisturizer on the lips. If you have dry lips or everybody's probably got dry lips because of the mask, um, you definitely need like some type of a shea uh, lip balm or something and a scrub. It's always good to do at least twice a week. So just like we talked about last week, scrubbing the face and exfoliating, you want to do the same thing with your lips, okay? Mm -hmm. That looks brow. good, Tibby. Look at the it brow. brow. It's a brow. All right, so I'm going in and doing what um, a lot of people call carving the brow. Um, which is using a color product, oftentimes people use concealer for this, to really like make sure that that brow is sharp, okay? It can cut someone. Um, but the product that I'm using is a cream-based eyeshadow. Um, it's called uh, a Paint Pot from MAC. Um, and the reason I like this is because one, it's designed to go on the eye versus uh, concealer oftentimes isn't designed to go where skin folds and it might crease if you put it on the eyelid. This is designed to be on the eye. And I like using this not just to carve the brow, but to prime the eye uh, because it has a long wear to it and because it comes in a variety of like skin tone shades. So sometimes we have discoloration on our eyes that you know as we're doing like eye colors that discoloration might be peeking through so this gives us just a blank canvas so that the color that we put on top is the color that we're going to get i'm going to put it on both eyes and then i'm going to set it with a little like skin tone shade powder um eyeshadow is skin tone shade eyeshadow because powder blends better on top of powder um so i want to make sure that it is seamless because like um Liz said, I'm going to be doing more of like a smoky eye, dramatic smoky eye. Um, and I want to let you guys know that a smoky eye is a technique, not a color. Okay. So a lot of times people think smoky eye, oh, that's dark, right? Uh, you can have a soft pink pastel smoky eye, right? That That's a thing. All a smoky eye means is that it is blown out. It is blended. There's no hard edges. It just seamlessly diffuses. So for that to happen, I'm going to put powder on top of this cream to set it so that that blending can happen. Awesome, I'm glad that you um, said that. So I did a, a liquid eyeshadow as well. I don't even know what I just did with it. But anyways, um, we, <laughs> oh, here it is. And this is like a, a neutral color. It's got some gold undertone to it, but it's really great for like everyday wear because I can show you how this is buildable because I'm also going to be using powder um, eyeshadows as well. So um, you'll see, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do it on this eye. You're gonna see the difference. And this does have a primer built in it, but if you don't have one of those liquid ones, like we said, a great eye primer is also good as well. So I did, I did use an eye primer um, on the other side, just so y'all can kind of see the difference. 
And then also what Chibi said about foundation, it's great to put a little bit of powder or foundation over the eyelids as well. It helps set the color, especially for those of y'all that are looking to kind of go more drama. You really want to set that color in there. Okay, so where are you at, Chibi? Uh, yeah, especially if you're in the oily side, like um, everything creases on me. Everything creases on me. This just happens. So we have to do a little extra work to kind of like make sure that these colors stay. So using that base, putting a little powder on to set it, and then going from there. So I'm gonna start in with uh, the smoky eye. And so with that, there's, there's an essential tool that you need if you wanna do a smoky eye. And honestly, like I can do a smoky eye with two brushes. You want a fluffy brush and a flat brush, okay? Fluffy, flat. Okay, so you can see one is round and dome shaped, the other one is lay flat. Uh, and just like we went over the last time in terms of the brush that you use and how that affects application, firmer, denser brushes apply product more intensely. Softer, fluffier brushes apply product softly. So depending on what you wanna do with it, that's your brush of choice is important. Now there are different sizes of flat and fluffy brushes. Um, so you can definitely have a myriad of them. Like I said, I can do a whole eye with two. I'll probably, because I have a lot of brushes, I will probably grab a few, but it's a flat and a fluffy brush. And I'm gonna be doing in a, like essentially like a purple dramatic smoky eye. We're gonna live in this world. Uh, but you could easily do the exact same techniques that I'm doing with these colors with these colors up here, right? It's the exact same techniques. You decide where you wanna go. So I'm gonna start in, Oh, and this would be a good time to mention the difference in eye shapes and why I'm gonna do it the way that I'm doing it. If you see my eyes, when I open my eyes, my eyelid disappears. All you see is, is, is you know, brow, bone, lid, crease thing. So I have what is called a deep set eye. So anything I do, if I did something intricate on my eyelid, it would just disappear. You wouldn't see it. What's the point? So I'm gonna do something that's more blown out and maybe like a pop of something on the lid so you get a little like peekaboo every time I blink, okay? So I'm gonna start with that on the inside and the outside with a dark purple and go from there with a flat brush. So I have what they call standardized and I'm gonna show y'all also a winged eye um, as well because it's a lot easier to do it on my eye. Uh, but I will show you the technique. Anyone can wear a winged eye you just have to play around with it. Remember, makeup is fun. Just play with it, you know? Keep keep trying until you get it to whatever look you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. But I am doing, okay, so this eye, and I hope y'all can see, um, I put a darker color on my, um, on my lid. Now, because I have a standard eye, you want to go, you want to cover the entire lid. Because when I open my eye, you can see my lid as you can tell there and i hope this light is good there we go and then i'm going to go into my crease how do you find your crease great question i knew you guys were going to ask you just for <laughs> so what you do is open your like close your eye and put your finger right between your eyeball like you'll feel where your eyeball meets that bone that's your crease everybody has it in a different spot so find your crease. I'm using a crease brush, okay? And you have one or two ways. Some people, they start they start on the end and they kind of go back and forth to create that drama. I like to cover, and I'm, I know I keep covering my eye. I like to cover the whole area and you're gonna see why in just a moment. With standard eyes, it just makes the color pop more. Um, but watch Tibby real quick because y'all, he's doing a crease on his eye and mm. it's a little different technique than what I use. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in, I patted that, you know, dark purple on the inside and outside uh, with the flat brush. And then I'm going in with the fluffy brush. And at first I'm going in with no color just to soften that edge. That's the big thing with a smoky eye is that it should be diffused, it should be soft, you shouldn't see the edges of the colors. And like Liz said, makeup is fun, make a mess. This is also why I'm doing my eyes without any foundation on, because that way I can make the mess, 
clean it up and it doesn't ruin whatever it is that I did beforehand, right? So going in there now with the fluffy brush and I really like, because I have a deep set eye, my, my crease is pretty prominent. I can just whoop, stick it in there and it looks like it's painful, but it's not, I promise. It's a soft fluffy brush. And just do this like windshield wiper motion and go back and forth. Um, if you want to get really good at eyeshadow, I suggest you use chopsticks more often, uh, which sounds funny, but it's muscle memory. You start training your fingers to do these things, right? I've seen people do their eyes and they're doing this. And it's like, why are you moving your arm? It's a, it's a tiny little space. There's no need for all that movement. Just tiny little finger motions. And that allows you to really like blend it out. Um, so now I'm going to go in, I went in with the dark purple, I'm going to go in with a lighter purple and then like a bright pink as I move further out with the fluffy brush to create that kind of like diffusion of color to color. Okay, awesome. So what I did was because this eye, I didn't do the cream under base. Um, so these are the colors that I decided to use tonight because um, I wanted to go a little bit more natural, but I do have purple in there. It's like a deep like a deep murk actually it's more like a burgundy or whatnot but um something i like about these particular eyeshadows is it's called chroma fusion it's the type of product it is um it doesn't have fallout so what that means is that i don't have eyeshadow when i put the eyeshadow on the brush and i apply it to my face my eye i don't have eyeshadow falling all over my face so if you're looking for a product that doesn't have fallout, Chroma Fusion is a great um, product for that. Mm, I'm so glad you mentioned fallout, Liz, because like we we talked about the acronym SLAB last uh, last week, which was Start, Light, and Build. I see so many people often like go in there and like pick up eyeshadow like and like load the brush up right and so that ends up causing fallout because you've got too much product on your brush um, or you'll load your brush and then you'll tap it to get rid of all the excess and it's like you're wasting your own product so like tap your brush into your product you know just pick up a little bit at a time you can always always add more you can see i'm going in with like the bright hot pink color now at the very top of the crease and I'm so gently applying it, you know, just very, very gently brushing it back and forth and creating a mess. We're gonna go into panda phase in a moment, okay? And panda phase is fine because we're gonna clean it up because I right. want some more intensity. This is fun. And if we're going too fast, please let us know and like drop information in, in the, drop your questions in the chat, please, please, please. Because we're just gonna keep going. Yes, please let us know if you have any questions. Also, another trick or something else to look for, if you um, if your if your eye area happens to have a little bit more like uh, a little bit more wrinkles or like if your texture, uh, well, we yeah we call we call them marinated divas. You know, if you've aged a little bit, you may want to look for some shadows that are not as shiny. Mm -hmm. um matte that's the word i was looking for maybe mm -hmm. like a more matte wear um eyeshadow and you can have a little glitz and glam because i mean everybody should have a little glitz and glam i'm i'm all about that um but just especially if your eye area you just are working on your eye area you don't want to bring too much attention to your creases so go with more like matte colors okay mm -hmm. And you can see I'm doing like a back and forth. I went back in with my flat, with my flat brush to just kind of intensify that purple. Um, go with the back and forth. It's absolutely totally fine uh, to create the effect that you want. Um, and then the other thing too, I meant to I mentioned this with uh, the eyebrows, but I'm going to mention it with the eyes too as well. Nobody's symmetrical, people. Don't stress out too much, okay? Sisters, not twins. You're fine. You know, if somebody is like clocking you because one side is just a little longer than the other side, they are too close to your face, six feet away, right? Place, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go in with some real intensity with a black. Now that I've kind of created this like diffusion that's happening all up in there, I want to really punch it. I want to get dramatic. So I put some black eyeshadow on the tip of my fluffy brush. And uh, I learned this from a drag queen 15 years ago, and I still use it to this day. You just kind of find where your eyelid meets your brow bone and just 
punch it in there and then wiggle, 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 wiggle. The brush is gonna do all the work for you in terms of diffusing it. You just gotta find the place to place it and boom, a little intensity right in there. I'm gonna keep doing that. That looks good. That Ooh. looks so good. Uh, let's see, I wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions. Yeah. Where, okay. where are you at with your look, Liz? Okay, so mm -hmm. I put on the four colors um, and I'm gonna show you how you can intensify so this side, just so y'all can see, I didn't do, like I was saying, I didn't do the liquid eyeshadow on that side. I just did a primer. This is just an everyday look. I always have people tell me, they're like, how do you mix three colors together? You blend, use your tools. Your tools are very, very important. You just pick it up and you blend. You blend till you get to what you, the look you want. And remember, everybody's look is gonna be a little different, okay? Mm -hmm. So you just get to your look that you want. And then um, to dramatize this eye, I can add black and I have a whole palette here as well. Um, so if you're going out, I'm gonna show you, you can either do black over top of it to kind of bring it out a little bit more, or my little trick I like to use is I'm gonna start with my eyeliner. I have two eyeliners I'm using tonight. I'm using a liquid eyeliner and a, a crayon. Um, I call it a crayon, but it's a pencil. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have one or two ways you can do it. You can start inward and go out, or you can start out and go in. Do what's easiest for you. But I, I always start in and I go out. So I'm going to line the top of my eye. Trick. If you line the top, you got to line the bottom. As you get older, you don't want to... You don't want to like line one part and then you have, you know, sagging and stuff like that. You just don't want to do that. Okay. Real talk, real talk. So I'm getting to the cleanup phase because it was, you know, I'm starting to look a mess, which is fine. Uh, this is one of my favorite tricks with cleaning up and creating a little bit of a sharper edge is using a, a little eye cream. We talked about eye cream last week in terms of like skin prep, but eye cream is also a great tool to use to clean up around the eye because it's soft, it's gentle, but it ends up removing everything. So I use like a little flat wedge sponge and you can see I just kind of went in there, I put it where I wanted it and I just softly go back and forth and I create this really sharp line um, and then try and get a symmetrical thing happening on the other side. And then I can bring it all the way underneath and any fallout that may have happened is now leg on. Bye. Yeah, I love that, that you cleaned it up. So remember I told you I was going to use this eyeliner pencil? So that's why I love this particular tool. Is So I started to line the eye and I'm starting my wing. And I'll show you all the rest of how to do the wing. But I'm, I'm in, oh, shoot. Sorry, somebody's trying to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. Sorry. I started I started my wing and I'm gonna finish the wing um and show y'all how to do it with a liquid liner, okay? Chibi is yeah, looking great. A, we're getting there. So this is the point where I'm gonna go ahead and do it just so you can see what like a completed look would happen. Now that I've kind of finished, oh no, I haven't. I'm a liar. Well, I've mostly finished what we're doing on the top of the eye. This is where I would be like, all right, now that I'm not worried about fallout anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and put my foundation on, right? Because we're gonna create that same smokiness to the bottom. I love what Liz said about like, line the top and the bottom. That's my general rule with smoky eyes. Whatever you do to the top, you better do to the bottom. And that creates a little bit of a um, balance. However, I just realized it's not complete. I'm sorry, guys. We need a little shimmer in our life. See that little like empty area? That's that peekaboo that I talked about because you can't see my eyelids when I open it. But if you put a little shimmer on there, it's going to like peekaboo every time uh, you blink. A lot of times shimmery eyeshadow tends to have a ton of fallout with brushes. So I like to use my finger um, and always with the eye area, use, um, use your ring finger because that's the gentlest one. And we're just gonna pat it right in the center. And then I'm gonna go in with a little, 
liquid glitter because um, this is very weird for a makeup artist, but I have sparklophobia. I get really, really nervous around glitter uh, because, you know, it's the cat hair of the makeup world and it can just get everywhere. But liquid glitter, if you're scared of glitter, it's okay. You can be scared of glitter. Um, liquid glitter allows you to get that same glittery effect. And this is the liquid glitter that I'm going to use, but with so much more control and without the fear of like, all of a sudden you will have glitter for three weeks, right? You might still, but. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't with glitter. I literally, like, I, I can feel my blood pressure raising. I, I can feel, I start to sweat. But this makes it so easy, and you can see what it does versus no glitter. Oh, yeah. Liz, looks, I see you going in there with that wing liner. Talk to us about your techniques, because wing liner is not easy to do. Right. Okay. So, you start with... I, I outlined it, okay? That was what I did with the crayon, okay? And then I I went on the side, and then as you wing, it's literally, y'all, let me show you on my hand. You just take it, and you just be very gentle, and I'm using a felt tip liquid liner, and you just, you just run away. You can't see that. Hold on. Let's turn the camera. You just be very gentle right? It's just like little strokes. And then you just outline it to the wing and you follow your line, your eye. So all I'm doing is I'm going to take this and I am, since my eye already is <laughs> follow your eye. Follow the eye. Yeah, I see. And you somebody... keep playing with it till you get it. Mm. Yeah, keep playing with it till you get it to where you want it, and you can clean it up. And that's what I was grabbing my, my um, my brush. I was gonna clean it up. There we go. I see somebody asked about you know like <laughs> I love glitter. Somebody d dislikes glitter. Somebody didn't even know that they made liquid glitter eyeshadows. Uh, sometimes makeup companies they should just call things what they are, right? And so they come up with like ridiculous names like this is called a dazzle shadow liquid. That doesn't tell me liquid glitter. Uh, but ask about it. Ask about it. It is out there. Most companies have a liquid glitter. Uh, if you do want to use like loose powder glitter um i suggest you use a base and by a base i mean like not like your traditional eye primer they sell sell specific glitter glue that'll just like and keep it on there uh because otherwise yeah you'll run the risk of it going everywhere um i'm going in with a little hot highlighter concealer just to kind of like brighten around the eye and then again carve that brow so that she's got a nice sharp edge to her and everyone can say they're on fleek even though nobody says that anymore so i screwed up a little bit and like i said it's makeup you play with that mm. so i'm using this oil free eye makeup remover it's really great because it's nourishing and it's not going to damage i'm gonna fix my i'm gonna fix my a little crazy with my wing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, it's makeup. If you make a mistake, wipe it off. No big deal, people. Um, I wanna answer a couple of questions while I'm finishing up this that are in the chat. Um, the MAC Paint Pot can be used as an eyeshadow primer, absolutely. For a very long time, uh, MAC artists would sell it as a primer. As a trainer, I worked very hard to be like, it is not a primer. It's a cream eyeshadow, but it works like a primer. So absolutely you can. And then any tips for outer eyes? If your outer eye curves down, um, a lot of times with like the eye shape that I have, this kind of like hooded lid, your the outside of your eye 
tends to droop lower than your actual <laughs> where your eye is. So what I like to do, especially if I'm doing a look like this, is I will bring that eyeshadow. Which one's doing a good job? This one. I will bring that eyeshadow out much further than my eyelid. And then what I'm going to do right now is actually connect it to the bottom so it creates the illusion that we are lifting and going out by going further than your actual eye shape. You don't have to be constrained to what your eye shape actually is. We're gonna go further than that to create a lifted fing kind of look, okay? So. Okay. Go. While you're doing that, okay, so I'm back on my wing. So I screwed up my wing, but I'm fixing it. Okay. So basically you go out and then, where's my brush? Uh, here's my brush. I like to use this brush because it helps drag the product to the outside of my eye. And then I'm gonna go, where are my books? Sorry, y'all. I got, y'all should see my desk. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. so I'm like trying to find, what did I do with that thing? <laughs> um. Okay, there we go. And then you just kind of just keep going to get the wing. And y'all, it's practice. It's not, you may screw it up the first time. It may even take you three or four times. And tonight, my eyes are not cooperating. So <laughs> this happens. This happens. And that's okay. Yes, it happens. And I'm like, Ugh, it's pissing me off. But we'll get it. We will, I will get it before the end of the night. I promise. Because <laughs> I'm going to keep playing with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went in with like a tiny little brush. This is called a pencil brush. And just added that eyeshadow underneath. Again, like we said earlier, whatever you do to the top, do it to the bottom. And that creates a much more well rounded, balanced effect. And that also allows me, like now my eye looks like it goes out and up versus the droopiness that it naturally has. I can call my own eyes droopy. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I would never call a client's eyes droopy. I have a message coming through to me. I notice when fallout happens, it stings my eyes. Is it the product causing that? I guess my question is, should makeup sting your eyes or should I be using a different product? I'm like, is it the eyeliner or the eyeshadow? Well, you know, to be honest, to be fair, to be real, it's a, it's a powder. Eyeshadow is a colored powder, and so if powder gets in your eyes, it's gonna hurt a little, it's gonna sting. Um, most of it doesn't sting very much, um, so you just kinda have to be really careful with it. That goes back to what we were talking about of start, light, and build. Don't overload your brush, just tap it in there. Pick up a little ad, pick up a little ad. You know, a little patience goes a long way. Yes. Also, I want to say with that, too, if you're finding that the eyeshadow is irritating your eye, maybe try a different product because it could be whatever you're using that's irritating. It's like, you know, if you try something on your skin and it's it's an irritation, then you need, I recommend just try something else. Yeah. Um, but eyeshadow, you know, as far as price goes, like I know our eyeshadows, they come individually, which is great. So these are magnetic and there's a lot of different, I mean, you can buy eyeshadows anywhere, but I'm just giving y'all an idea. Um, these are $8 a piece and they last about two years um, with everyday use. And then you have places where you can buy, you know, like a whole palette, like with, um, and then there's palettes like this. Yeah, there's a whole palette. So it's just really up to you. I know some people say, oh, I hate going to go shop for eyeshadow and I like maybe two colors. And then they feel like they have to buy the whole palette. Look for where you can buy them individually if you're that person. Now, if you don't mind playing with the makeup and having, like, I have all the colors because I never know what, what I'm going to do for the day. Um, I may wake up and say, oh, I want to try this look or whatever. Um, if you're that person, then go ahead and invest in the palette. But if you're looking mm -hmm. for something individual, look for, you know, companies or places where you can buy it individually. Okay. So uh, absolutely. And price point is not does not necessarily indicate quality. Um, I'm using eyeshadows from what's this brand again? Morphe. They're very affordable. Yeah. And for the most part, not all, but for the most part, they're of great quality. 
Um, it's just learning how to play with them. You know, so if you have different brands, they're going to work a little differently. So that's where you have to play a little bit um, so that you know how much product you need to use for this eyeshadow versus that eyeshadow. Um, typically, like, again, I worked for Mac for 10 years, so that was the majority of what I used. Um, a Mac eyeshadow, you can buy them individually. I don't think I ever hit pan on one of those, all right? In 10 years, I think I have one eyeshadow that I actually hit the pan on because of how little you have to use, right? So they will last you a long time. Um, what I'm going in with right now is going in with some eyeliner on the bottom eyelid. Just uh, this is where we make awkward faces, right? Uh, and Brian. then what I like to do is just kind of blink a few times because that's going to smudge it which sounds like you don't want that to happen, but when creating like a smoky eye like this, like I wanna give it a little smudge, a little grunge, uh, and then just go in with your pencil brush and diffuse it so you've got that like, mmm, sultry. And we, talk, we talk expiration dates, yes. yes so no. any kind of eye product, okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, mascara needs to be changed every three months. It's because we, because of our eyes and then we have liquids that come out our eyes just to keep the bacteria out every three months mascara eyeliners can go about a year eyeshadows two years um foundation is a year after you've opened it and uh lips uh two years two to three years for lip stuff um now if it's like if it doesn't look like the natural color anymore if it has an odor or if it's kind of it feels weird you need to throw it out um i don't care if you bought it a year ago just throw it out because you don't want to get an eye infection or some type of lip something on your lips you just you just want to be very careful um thank you lex for bringing that up about the expirations yeah, um absolutely with powder with the I was just gonna say with powders, there's a little more forgivableness to it because it's a dry product. But anything that that is cream, especially like Liz said, mascaras, it's dark, it's damp in there. Bacteria will grow. Get rid of it. Buy a new one. Okay. Oh, also, there's another trick while we're talking about mascaras because he's getting ready to put mascara on. I know. Um. So this mascara, for example, what I like about it is the bristles okay so when you're shopping for a mascara look for the bristles that you prefer so this one happens to have the fine tips that gets right into those little hairs on the inner part of your eye and i'm i don't usually put mascara on because i have lashes but i'm gonna put some on the parts where my lashes are not now, y'all, I didn't used to wear lashes and all that stuff. You, I'm not telling you, you have to go out and buy lashes or anything like that. Because um, you can get the same look with your mascara. You just got to know how to work it, okay? But if you do have lashes, um, what I like to do is I'll put my mascara on the bottom to kind of bring those out with the top, okay? Um, I do want to say something else, too, about eyeshadow real quick before we move to uh, the lips is um, I put a little light, like whatever I do on my highlight, I put it on the inner part of my eye and it wakes my eye up. So that way, if you have any kind of darkening, um, cause I know some people asked about dark circles last time. If you have darkening under the eye or if you tend to get darkening, that's a great trick to wake up your eye is to put a little bit of your highlight color in the, um, in the middle of your eye. So real quick, before we move on to the lip, and I do want to answer your question. Um, I just saw it come through, uh, Nikki. Okay, so um, before I answer Nikki's question, your base color is usually your darkest color. Your crease color is the second darkest color. And then your highlight is always your lighter color. So to kind of give y'all an idea, just like Chippy said, you can use any color to make like a smoky eye or even a natural look, that's how you determine where stuff goes. And depending on your eye shape is where you're gonna put it. So if you have more of a standard eye, you're gonna put your base color all over your bottom lid. If you're more like Chibi, like he did it more in the middle and brought it out. If your eye shape is more like what they call like the wide, 
not the close set, but the wide set, you bring it all the way up to your brow bone. And then you your crease, I showed y'all how to find your crease. You always put your middle color in your crease and then your highlight goes under your under your brow. And then I always highlight in the middle. And then for those that have white, uh, closed set eyes, you highlight on the sides. That's how you open your eye, okay? Is you highlight on the sides like Chibi did. Okay, to answer your question about favorite mascaras. Um, well, I use all Mary Kay products, but I will tell you this. Um, your mascara, you want to make sure it doesn't get clumpy and you want a mascara that's smooth. And the same thing with your eyeliner. Now, the trick to not drying out your mascara is you never pump, you always twist. Mm, so mm. if you've been pumping your mascara, you're putting air, and that's why your mascara is drying out and it's getting clumpy. Mm. So um, just look for any mascara, just make sure it's smooth to touch and you shop by your bristles, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the packs will have what the bristle looks like on the outside. So when you're shopping for your mascara, just look and see what kind of brush is on the inside. Yeah, let me talk a little bit about the bristles because I use two different mascaras. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but you're y'all are about to get very close to my face in a moment. Um, so on one side, I use kind of like what Liz was using, which is a very small, fine tooth comb. And these are better if you want to separate your lashes, if you want definition, okay? Because it will it will coat each one and then kind of comb them. Then on the other side, I use one that is like this big mama jama kind of brush, right? So these are better if you want volume, if you want them to look thicker and fuller. So let's see, let's, okay guys, welcome to my face. Ooh. Okay, so this one was the softer one, so it just kind of defines. This one you can see they're a little bit more predominant on this eye, because they're a little fuller, a little clumpier. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, that's what the brush. That's what the brush is going to do. Um, so everyone's got their own. I am going to put some lashes on because people always want to know about lashes. Uh, but before I put lashes, what I did was I blotted my lips to take off the ointment that I put on there, and then I'm going to put a lip primer on so that, that has a chance to set while I'm putting the lashes. And a lip primer is so important because it does multiple things. It hydrates the lips. It smooths out any texture so that you don't see the lips. Yes, very much. Ding! And then it helps keep the product from feathering. So it'll help keep it in place. Um, and the reason you want to use a lip primer versus you're like, yeah, but I got my Burt's Bees chapstick that I love. I love me some Burt's Bees chapstick. But chapstick is usually very oil-based and oil will break down makeup. L lip primers are usually wax-based and that's not going to break down makeup. It's going to help cling to makeup um so if you're not gonna wear anything go for it put on your chapstick walk out she's got a little gloss and hydration all in one but if you do plan on wearing lip products um use a lip primer invest in a lip primer they're super soft you can use them every day even if you're not wearing them um, and it's going to help prolong the life of the integrity and the life of whatever lip product you're wearing so i'm going to while that sets i'm gonna put some lashes on uh, it's well, while he's doing his lashes, I just put a liner on. I want to show y'all something. I have full lips. I understand not everybody has full lips. So let me teach you a trick. If your lips are more thin, what you do is find your lip line. And then you go not even like barely like a half a step. Like you take it by your lip line and then just slightly go above and line your lips there. Don't be way up here because that ain't going to look right. But just barely above, okay? Now, if you have really, really full lips and you're wanting to shrink them down a little bit, then you go right under your lip line. And then that will make them more defined, okay? So I did a, I did a lip primer as well. Um, I also, another trick is a little bit of foundation on your lips too. Cause we're gonna do an ombre look tonight. So y'all are in for some treats and I'm gonna put a little bit of foundation on my lips. And let's see here. Did we answer your question, Nikki? I just wanna make sure we didn't. 
leave you hanging. Okay. Mm. I'm glad that he you know that Kibby knows how to put on lashes, y'all. I've been in poke my eyeball out. So I, mm-hmm. I go and pay somebody to put my lashes on. Hey, yes, I will say it is much easier to put lashes on somebody else than it is to put them on yourself. That's for sure. Uh, two tricks that I will share to help you put lashes on yourself should you choose. One, when you put the glue on the lash, give it a couple of minutes not a couple of minutes, it's much quicker than that. Give it some time for the glue to start to dry a little bit, all right? So you should see it start to kind of like bead up because that's when you know that it's tacky. When the glue first comes out of the bottle, whether you're using a squirt or like, I like to use a glue that already has like a wand on it. Um, When it first comes out, it's very liquidy and it's not gonna stick to anything, y'all, absolutely nothing. Um, So you wanna put it on and then give it some time for it to really dry. And then the next trick is get your mirror. You wanna use a hand mirror and put it down here so that you can look down as you're putting your lashes on. There's no way you're gonna do it if you're looking straight ahead. Uh, And I look crazy with one eyelash. (laughs) Let me put the other one. Uh, Kevin asks, does it help to have mascara on prior to putting lashes on or it doesn't matter? It just helps your lashes blend into the false lashes a little more. So typically, yes, you're gonna wanna do that. I will say some people have very, very, very curly lashes. And uh, if you put mascara on, (laughs) Liz is like me. If you put mascara on your already very curly lashes, they're gonna do this and then it's gonna make it harder for you to put the lash on. So sometimes you don't have to, uh, but for the most part, yeah, put a little mascara on first so that your lashes can blend into the false lashes. And then as you're noticing, now my eye, let's, let's not look at this eye. Now my eye is a little top heavy. So because of the lash and how dramatic it is, so I'm probably going to go out and smoke out the bottom and make it a little more dramatic for that balance. Liz, where are you at with lips? Liz, you're muted, my friend. Come back, come back and unmute yourself. I'm talking and didn't even know I was on mute. Okay, um, yes, if you have curly lashes, you want to do it after your mascara after. Um, Where am I out of my lips? Okay, so I just did a neutral color um, and I'm gonna do an ombre, okay? So I I mixed my, my, um, what am I trying to say? Lip liner and then did a little bit of foundation and y'all, this is just a nude color, okay? Now I am going to dramatize it a little bit. I have several lipsticks here, but I'm just going to You can mix and match lipsticks. So ombre is really just basically taking a darker color, putting it in the middle, and then blending. So let me put my other color on first. This is my shimmer. This is a lipstick. And you just do like that. Okay. So this is my everyday look. Um, I know it may be hard to see, but this is just an everyday look, you know? I just did very something very simple. This, you can see it's got a little bit more drama because as you can see, the separation of colors over here and I did it more like of a wing and with the mascara and stuff. And then of course, in the next class or the previous class, y'all should have learned about highlighting contour, how you can bring that out. So go back on to the website if you didn't go to that class or you missed it. It was such um, a good class, y'all. You, I hope you didn't miss it. Yeah, so that way you can learn about highlighting contour. And then we talked briefly about um, blush last time, but definitely bring all the classes together to get you know your full look. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do ombre with the darker color. Mm-hmm. That was what? a fun class, Nikki said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And while, she, day. and while she's doing that, I want to give you just a quick uh, like little tip on putting it, putting your lashes on. As you were seeing, I was kind of going back and forth. If you want to put the outside edge of your lash on, you want to look in, right? So I'm going to look towards my nose to be able to put it on the outside. And then when you're trying to do the inside edge of your eye, you want to look out because that stretches the inside of your eye and you're able to really get in there. I hope that helps. Uh, yes. All right. Mm. 
Ooh wee. Okay, so we got a few minutes, uh, Chibi. We got like five minutes. Ah! I know, I know. We good. I'm going in there. I'm gonna do a, a nude, a nude-ish lip. Uh, and similarly to Liz's technique in terms of like contouring the lips, I'm gonna go in with a very cool color. Uh, see how kind of like gray almost topish it is? Cause that's gonna start to create shadow around the lip. Um, I may use like three different lip pencils, y'all. Lip pencils are where it's at, okay? Invest oh, yeah. in a number of lip pencils and then buy like one lipstick and make it do all the work. Yes, and you can use pen, uh, brushes too to help. Um, it just really comes down to the tools, y'all. So I did like a little ombre look. This is pretty cool. I I usually sometimes don't do this, but I really like the way it came out. Um. Y'all, you could wear this every day. And I know we're wearing masks, but thank you. I know we're wearing masks, but definitely do your lips. Oh, while Chibi's doing his lips, since we're talking about masks, if you um, want to still have lipstick on after you take your mask off, let's say you're going to dinner, you're getting ready to eat, then you want to use a matte lipstick, okay? A matte lipstick and then spray it with um, a setting spray. So, or you can use like a, a translucent powder on it, but a matte lipstick will not transfer onto your mask. And I'm telling y'all, cause I've done this plenty of times. I'm getting ready to go eat with somebody and I want lipstick on when I get to the table, do a matte lipstick and spray it with the setting spray and your lipstick will still be on when you get, when you take your mask off. Um, something else too, while Chibi's uh, doing the lips, um, I used cream lipsticks um, tonight and more of a, um, a semi shine because I just happen to like that look. Um, but definitely when you're shopping for lipsticks, try them on. You don't know what you like until you try it. I thought for example, I thought this color was too light for me because of my skin tone. And then I tried it on and voila, I fell in love. So um, try all, it on. That's also the beauty of lip liners is, you know, a lipstick might be very light because it's a nude, but if you use a darker lip liner to create that kind of like ombre effect to it, then suddenly that lipstick looks gorgeous on you. Yes. So I'm going to answer a couple questions. So for Lena, and I'm sorry if I said the name incorrect, um, a clear gloss over matte lipstick. You can, if you want more of a shine, um, you can do a clear gloss or you can even do a colored gloss. Um, it'll just give you more of an ombre look. It's going to change a little bit of the color with your lipstick and it will, it'll be just as great. Okay. How long, okay. This is for you, Chibi. How long should fake lashes stay on? What's the... Oh, I missed that. She froze. How long should fake lashes right. stay on? Um, the day. Because at the end of the day, you should be washing your face and therefore taking off your fake lashes, people. Please don't leave them on overnight. Yeah. False lashes will stay on for the day, but take them off before you wash your face at the end of the night. Um, most of them are very reusable. Uh, there's a very large variety of brands. Um, so each of them have a different lifespan, a different integrity. Um, if you're talking about the ones that are, um, more like lash extensions and things like that, those do stay on for a very long time. Uh, they end up damaging your lashes if you do them too often. So like use them with a grain of salt, be careful with those, but yeah, you should take them off at the end of the day. And to take them off, most of the glue that people use is Duo. That's like the most recognized brand. It's a liquid latex. Uh, all you gotta do is pinch them on the end and pull them off. They come right off. They don't yank your lashes off. If you're allergic to latex, they do make latex free uh, liquid lash. Um, but yes. Um, Thank you. That was the question, sorry. You're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Latex free uh, lash glue totally exists out there. Just make sure it says latex free if you're allergic. So yeah, I went with a little, to finish off, I went with a neutral pink nude lip to bounce with the purple and a little gloss because we like healthy shine and uh, ding. Looks great. Looks, Looks great. I also want to say too, 
um, when removing your eye makeup, make sure you get an oil free makeup remover. Um, you want to make sure you wash in your face at night. We talked about that last time. Remove your eye makeup at night. We talked about that as well. This is all a part of just that hygiene and keeping up with your skin. Chibi, you look fabulous. I'm feeling that one of my eyes is a little janky right now, but that's because I'm lopsided. So I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go like this. It no, is you're okay. Angry. It is okay. It happens to us all. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, one eye was acting right and the other one was acting special tonight. Mm -hmm. I was like, seriously, why do you have to do that to me? But anyways, um, thank you. So do y'all have any other questions real quick? It's 701 and oh my gosh, we got it done. Oh my yeah. goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Like we said earlier, a lot of these, we focused a lot on technique more than specific products. So this exact look that I created that looks intense because I did purples and pinks, you can do in soft browns, right? And it's a little bit softer, a little more wearable, less intimidating, right? So focus on the techniques that Liz and I talked about today more than the actual colors themselves. Uh, and again, brushes, brushes be your friend. Get you some good brushes, get you a variety of brushes. Uh, stop applying makeup with your fingers. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely that. And don't forget, um, on Friday, there's the Avant Garde with Jay and Red. They are going to be doing the non-traditional ways out of the box. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to watch that session. It's at 1 p.m. Visit the San Antonio Public Library's uh, page. And I believe they put the link in the chat. So if you have not registered for that class, go ahead and register. Um, these are also up on the YouTube page, what's been recorded for the four sessions. And um, definitely get with the Pride Center. Um, they have a lot of things available. You know, be fun with it. Gender diversity. You know, makeup is fun. It's for everybody. It's not just specific for women, which I know may have been the norm in the past. We want everyone to feel comfortable and to, you know, just explore, have fun with it. As you saw, Chibi was having a blast with the makeup and so was I. So you do the same thing. Just yeah. try stuff, get out there. Um, you know, if y'all have questions, I believe y'all have our information. We'll get it to you guys again through the library and we are looking forward to, um, you know, whatever else y'all need, if y'all have more questions, just reach out to us, okay? Yeah, I'm dropping uh, in the chat my Instagram and then the hashtag express yourself SATX. If you guys create any looks after these classes uh, and you post them online, use that hashtag, tag us, tag San Antonio Library at my SAPL tag the pride center which i think is lex can you put it in there it's pride center satx question mark pride center sa there you go uh and to answer your questions about the lash they sh can stay on all day i can usually only wear them for 15 minutes as you can see they are off okay <laughs> uh but yeah thank you guys so much thank you to the san antonio library and the pride center uh it seems like you guys got a lot out of it reach out to us if you need to um liz put her contact info in the chat as well uh, go create some beautiful looks, people. Post them. Share. Let us know. I might go have a photo shoot right now. I'm feeling a little fabulous. All right. Thank uh, you, TV. Oh, Thank I'm, you, I'm sorry. You're welcome. And they said, I do want to see that. I saw the thing. They said the YouTube videos aren't up yet. It'll be a few weeks. So just keep an eye out on the webpage. Okay, go ahead. Close us out. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you all for attending. Thank you to our presenters. Uh, thank you to the Pride Center, the Library Foundation. You guys are all just so amazing. And, you know, we hope we can continue on with the series. And that'll be it for tonight. Thank you. Bye. Bye.